good morning everybody so i welcome you in this uh, course of uh, biochemistry 2 already you have taken the biochemistry 1 so we are going to use a uh, lots of information that we have learned in biochemistry 1 and we are applying into our biochemistry 2 so at the beginning i'm going to talk about our office hours the textbook that we need the course objectives especially the uh, learning objectives here and uh, you are also going to learn the exams the abs absence policies all these things we are going to discuss here uh, to begin with my office hours has been changed this trimester it is Tuesday and Thursday it is from 11 o'clock to 1 p.m. and Wednesday from 10 p.m. Uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. here we still do not have any lab hours we don't have any labs it is all lecture, three hours of lecture per day, three, day, uh, three days in a week. And uh, this is my email address. If you need to contact me, this is my extension. I prefer email uh, if you have any questions, but you can always uh, stop by during my office hours to discuss if you have any uh, thing to uh, discuss about the topics, biochemistry here. Uh, to start with, I think, um, the whatever we learned in biochemistry 1 we are going to apply also in biochemistry 2 in tri 1 biochemistry 1 we have learned about the carbohydrate biochemistries mainly the metabolic pathways but before that we also learned about the functional groups in this biochemistry 2 we are going to use all those functional groups how they are important in performing several biochemical reactions we have learned so many of them like hydroxyl groups like phosphate groups the reactions oxidation reduction reactions which are also important again we're going to see many many times the involvement of the oxidizing agents or the reducing agent like we talked about NAD plus FAD those are the oxidizing agents and when they are converted to their corresponding reducing agents such as NADH or FADH2 or the NADP the phosphorylated form was also converted to the phosphorylated reduced form NADPH so in many oxidative pathway which are also catabolic pathway which are also talks about how the larger molecules are broken down and that's the oxidation process the catabolic process the breakdown process and also highly exergonic process compared to that when you are talking about the reduction we are using mainly the NADPH as a reducing agent these are endergonic reactions they trap energy and many biosynthetic pathway actually almost all reductive biosynthetic pathway uses NADPH and you have learned the major source of NADPH in tri one uh, is a you have learned it it is a pentose phosphate pathway and also you are going to learn there is another malic enzyme reaction which is connected with the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle they are also linked with the NADPH productions which is an important molecule reducing agent in our systems and which are used and also these are derived from the vitamins so all those functional concept of functional groups like certain reactions what is oxidation reactions what is reduction reactions what is ester formation we know I have repeated so many times um, the esters are produced by using the organic alcohols containing the hydroxyl groups and the carboxylic acid groups the they combine and they produce the esters also we have learned in molecular biology when the DNA polymers or the RNA polymers are produced similarly the hydroxyl groups participate with the phosphoric acid part and they produce the phosphoester bonds here we are also learning the alcoholic groups also can work with sulfidyl groups SH containing groups and they produce a thioesters so hydroxyl groups carboxylic acids they join to make esters 
hydroxyl groups with the phosphate phosphate groups they produce a phosphoester bonds the hydroxyl group with the thioester uh, thio, thiol group sh group or sulfhydryl groups they produce a thioester bonds so all these ester bond formation they help in synthesis of new molecules which mainly majorly they are used for uh, storage purpose in our system we will talk about that but again we are going to see so many intermediates from the glycolytic pathway intermediates from the pentose phosphate pathways intermediates from the krebs cycles glycogenesis glycogen breakdown process or synthesis of glycogens glycogen all these things they are involved in production of many other compounds that we have not talked about in this trimester we are mainly going to talk about the fat metabolism which includes the fatty acid oxidation and the fatty acid biosynthesis after that we are going to talk about the amino acid metabolism fat metabolism also contains the cholesterol biosynthesis we will talk about how these lipid molecules are transported inside our tissues inside our target tissues we are going to talk about lipoproteins lipid blood proteins which are helping in the transportation of the lipids into our target tissues as i said we are also going to talk about how the amino acids are metabolized same thing how the amino acids are broken down to the constituent other molecules or compounds and how the amino acids are synthesized we are going to see again the intermediates from the carbohydrate metabolisms are helping in the biosynthesis of these amino acids we are also going to talk about the disease conditions um, that are involved during amino defective amino acid metabolisms we will talk about how some molecules some modified fatty acids which are known as eicosanoids are also helps uh, us in controlling our inflammation some of them work as a pro inflammatory agents some of them work as a uh, anti inflammatory agents in the we will talk about nucleic acid biosynthesis also at the end the second part of this course we will deal with the vitamin biochemistry and the mineral biochemistry which i think you will feel more interested so far we have learned in our biochemistry 1 that several of the vitamins they must be converted to the active forms and once the active forms are produced they can be utilized as a coenzyme and participate in almost all metabolic pathways almost all enzymes in the metabolic pathway they either use the vitamins in their active form or they use the cofactors like mineral ions are always used here so we will deal with all those things and that is going to help us to know how these important vitamins and minerals are playing a major role in our health conditions you can also apply the concept of nutritional biochemistry when you are learning these minerals and vitamins and how that's the chiropractic concept the nutritional concept of chiropractic uh if we can treat many patients which are who are undergoing deficiency of these vitamins and minerals and by supplementation by proper adjustment of these minerals and vitamins many of these disease can be fixed many of these clinical situations can be reversed back so that's an interesting class we are going to talk about here we are also going to know there are some special products derived from the amino acid there are several amino acids which are involved in heme biosynthesis heme is required as you know at least you know the hemoglobin myoglobin biosynthesis but we are also going to see many of these important amino acids they are involved in creatine biosynthesis they are involved in nucleic acid biosynthesis they are involved in synthesis of so many neurotransmitters in our systems second messenger molecules so they have many importance in our systems not only the amino acids are involved in proteins and peptide biosynthesis but they are also important for generation of so many other important molecules in our systems and we are also dealing with the mechanisms of these nutrient molecules vitamins everything in our and how that is related to our chiropractic 
how that is linked with our physiologic concept, general pathology, pharmacology, toxicology, the nutrition. So you are going to see everything uh, involves almost every topic that you are learning onwards. Uh, the importance of biochemistry, the importance of biomolecules, how they are applied here. Our required textbook still remains the Leringer's Principles of Biochemistry and the second textbook we need the Krauss Food and Nutrition Care Process. The second textbook is uh, required for the vitamin and mineral section that we are going to talk about here. We have the Red Scan run as usual. The department will supply that to take your exams. There is a nice recommended textbook, Lipin Course Illustrated Reviews, Biochemistry which is an important one. That's a nice review here. Our major learning outcomes um, are these that identify biologically important molecules in relation to their major actions involved in biochemical metabolic pathways. So that's the level one you are identifying which molecules are important. Second learning objective you need to demonstrate the biochemical metabolic pathways the every steps as you have learned in glycolytic pathway and how they are regulated so that's the regulatory mechanisms third important learning objective you should be able to elucidate central biochemical function of the molecules you are learning in a particular pathway and how the how the what is the mechanism of action of them once you now know or able to understand apply identification of the molecules how the metabolic pathways are running how they function in our system in our health conditions what are the mechanisms of action at this point you should be able to integrate all the informations you should be able to evaluate the biochemical concept and mechanisms of action and you should be able to interpret what to do how it is linked with the pathology and how to develop your treatment strategy all these things are important that's how next we are coming to our uh, biochemistry course mapping this trimester we have matched our student learning outcomes with the cce meta competencies the parker graduate focus and our national board uh, part one chemistry with the objectives how they are linked to each other you can read these things here now my philosophy is teaching as you know I like to I love teaching always definitely I try to play model role for you not only as a teacher uh, but also as a scientist as a researcher so I also include when I teach uh, my research experience my learning experience when I was as a student and my as my experience grown uh, as I moved from my student life to my uh, research life and also as a faculty I have gained some experiences and I can share that with you so that's an important thing and also I read the recent uh, journals recent research informations and I most times I like to share those new recent information with you um, that's a important concept always we see that many of these are not written in the textbook because they are just published within a week or two or a month ago or a year ago so some of these when I find interesting some papers manuscripts reading so I like to uh, share that with you to understand our new um, inventions new discoveries new concept about the molecules etc so you can read all these things I am I'm engaging teacher probably uh, you know me so you are also learning in many different ways so best thing I think you learn yourself repeat those information write it down so many times and discuss in a group nice group and repeat those information in that way you are learning better and better all the time you should be enthusiastic I am also enthusiastic when I teach my particularly my course in biochemistry I love biochemistry I like the nutritional concept of the biochemistry which is tightly linked with your chiropractic profession and uh, in that way I also develop myself and I also try to help you share my informations that I have learned etc 
so we can go for that next I am going to talk about the as a student you have certain rights and also as an instructor I also do have some rights to do that our grading policy in Parker University we have A, B, C and F grade we do not have the D 69.49 or below is uh, unacceptable or just a failing grade and I set up my blackboard as 69.50 that's my borderline if you are getting 69.49 that will be indicated as a F here so in this exam uh, biochemistry 2 course I have three lecture exam 25 percent each I have one critical thinking assignment which is linked with the try to capstone project um, that I give in uh, biochemistry 2 similarly as you have taken the classroom group activity in trimester 1 with the G proteins here also we are doing the classroom group activity assignment and I will give you the information that you need to know and then you are working as a group of four or five and answering those questions within the class periods and, and we can discuss that again later so uh, in details so in that way it is 10% of that um, total 100% of the uh, total grade here we have online quiz there are there will be six quiz it is five percent one lowest quiz grade will be dropped and final lecture exam is ten percent here so for the online quiz uh, it will be open you will see in the announcement you need to take that on time if you are not able to take on time you will receive the uh, a zero grade for that but if you are facing some technical problems you can always contact me by email then I can see review and fix that for you there is no makeup exams for quiz there is no makeup exam for any exams unless it is a uh, excused absence if you are not able to take the exam inform me beforehand most time but sometimes we don't know due to some accidents or some unforeseen things can happen but always I like to have a documentation to give you the excused absent and for that excused absent if you are missing any exam or quiz I will allow you to take that makeup quiz or makeup exams for that I do not give any extra credits in this course you can the most of the questions that we are asking you will be the MCQ type uh, single multiple choice question there could be some filling type questions but I have right to give you short answer types also or one essay type or two essay type questions here and when we are talking about the makeup quiz or makeup um, exams here lecture exams remember that I have that uh, right to give you all multiple choice questions or some short answer questions or some essay type question I reserve that right right for me here you can read these things everything will be due in time um, we have several learning uh, this is showing the trimester capstone project for all tries here we are focusing on all these things all trimesters are focusing in try one you focused on this try two you are focusing on these things and it is a uh, continuous proce process for the capstone project here so here also we have written the student learning outcome uh, about the capstone project here so you will be able to see these levels uh, what you need to do for this capstone project or group activities here we have academic assistance if you need some um, accommodations the university will um, arrange that for you with proper documentation and review processes we have academic policies we particularly the professional conduct things course outlines are also described here like in the first time first we are beginning with the fatty acid oxidation and ketone bodies this is the fat metabolism which includes the oxidation of fats ketone bodies the synthesis of lipids 
cholesterols, blood lipoproteins, eicosanoid, all these up to topic 5 uh, is under the lipid metabolism. Once we cover that, we are covering the amino acid metabolism. We are talking about how the nitrogen part of the amino acids are metabolized to produce urea, how the carbon portion of the amino acids are also metabolized to produce so many different things. Next in topic 8, we are going to talk, talk about the one carbon group transfer reaction. We are partially starting our vitamin chemistry, but not everything. We are going to talk about special reactions performed by the tetrahydrofolic acid vitamin B12 and the specially modified amino acid S adenosyl methionine. Then we are going to talk about how different amino acid can produce some special products in our systems. Metabolism will be covered as we have learned all metabolism, carbohydrate, fat, amino acid, nucleic acid metabolisms and now we are going to see the connections between among these all these metabolic pathways here. From topic 11 we are starting our vitamin chemistry. It is divided and we are using the second uh, recommended textbook here or required textbook here. We are talking about the water soluble vitamins, fat soluble vitamins. Once we complete that we are moving to the mineral section. We are completing the major minerals and the trace elements or trace minerals and that completes our course here. So I have also written individual lecture topic learning objectives for each topic. It is in more details. I recommend you to keep this handy. It is also described in our Blackboard web page. You will see for each topic there is a specific learning objective for this that will be useful. Keep this handy for each topic when I am lecturing on that. And after this you are going to see once we are completing this specific learning objectives uh, this is the QP critical thinking rubric for the classroom group assignment so this is saying all these things what is the purpose if you can define that or demonstrate that uh, you cannot do it does not clearly understand the purpose of this uh, assignment or you can understand something or you can understand fully so in this way I am using this rubric to grade you for that assignment here so you can go over that then that completes our um, course here if we see our lecture calendars lecture calendar is also dated and it is also describing which chapters we are using for the Leninger's textbook we have the online quiz and which topics are covered in the quiz. We have the exams as you see here. Exam 1 is covering topic 1 to 4. But these are all tentative. We can change it and we can roll over to the another topic. It is changeable. It is not. And it is a capstone group activity assignment. That's a group activity in your classroom. We are talking about that. So this is also covering all the quizzes here and chapters, different chapters from the textbook. So this completes our course calendar and course syllabus. Thank you um, very much. Uh, we will start our class in our next day and uh,